Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. I am pleased to speak at today's Indonesian Economic Forum. In, as Indonesia will soon conclude its presidency of G20, as well as assume, assume the chairmanship of ASEAN 2023, this event is a timely opportunity to explore as we can build synergy and ensure co co coherence and continuity between its G20 accomplishments with its priority for ASEAN next year. This regard allowed me to con contribute to the discussion by sharing some of the recent development in ASEAN, particularly in the ASEAN economic community that may be relevant in the years ahead. Certainly, the past few years have been challenging for the region as COVID-19 pandemic has left a devastating social economic impacts on the life or on livelihood of our people. However, through our collective action, particularly ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework and its implementation plan, we are now emerging safer and more resilient as a region. I'm pleased to share that ASEAN's GDP is expected to grow by 5.1% this year and 5% next year. Indeed, with a combined GDP of more than 3.4 trillion US dollar in 2021, the region has emerged as the world's fifth largest economy and is on track to become the fourth largest by 2030. Despite this, we must remain vigilant as global volatility remains disrupting supply chain, driving us the prices of key commodity, as well as resulting in the rise of inflation. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In addition, ASEAN continues to face numerous emerging challenges that will influence the future of ASEAN community building and its integration efforts. Digital transformation and climate change are chief among them and will have a profound impact on ASEAN economics, community building, priorities and agenda in the future. Bringing about multiple impacts to the economy and society, digital transformation presents significant benefit to the businesses and industry through improved productivity and efficiency. At the same time, it also raises a range of risks in terms of employment, inequality, and cyber security issues. In this end, towards this end, ASEAN launched the Consolidated Strategy on the Fourth Industrial Revolution last year to provide a clear narrative on how ASEAN community intends to progress digital transformation and embrace new technologies in a comprehensive manner. Furthermore, in order to ensure effective implementation of the strategy, ASEAN has also developed an implementation plan covering 181 initiatives across the three pillars of ASEAN community to help advance the and accelerate ASEAN 4IR agenda and priority, which includes concluding negotiation for the ASEAN Digital Economy Framework Agreements by 2025. Meanwhile, ASEAN is also one of the regions in the most particularly vulnerable to climate change and environmental degradation. To address this long-term challenge, ASEAN will need to pursue a net zero carbon emission as soon as possible. In this regard, ASEAN has pursued a cross-pillar strategy approach to meet the, its climate and sustainability objective. While ASEAN social and cultural community works towards advancing an environmental agenda that promotes sustainable climate, biodiversity management and sustainable livelihood, the AEC continues to integrate relevant sustainability agendas, objectives in its work streams. Crucial among the AEC related initiatives are the framework for circular economy for AEC 
which aims to guide the region's journey towards a resource efficiency, economic resilience and sustainable growth, as well as ongoing development for an ASEAN carbon neutrality plan. This regional initiative complements ASEAN member states' efforts to implement their nationally determined commitment under the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with Indonesia assuming ASEAN Chairmanship next year, and as we inch closer to the end of the AEC Blueprint 2025, a number of priorities are worth highlighting. First, effective implementation of various initiatives under AEC Blueprint 2025 is key to bringing the regions to its intended destination. With many initiatives already in place, we should proactively take practical steps to ensure that all these commitments and obligations can bring benefit to our stakeholder. Secondly, addressing emerging cross scouting issues will require coordinated, holistic and a whole of the community approach, necessitating closer collaboration across the three pillars of ASEAN as well as leveraging on existing institutional mechanism and processes. The recent interface between ASEAN Energy Minister, ASEAN Transport Minister and ASEAN Agriculture and Forestry Minister held on the sideline of 21st AEC Council on the 9th November 2022 is one example on how various sectors can sit together to discuss areas of mutual concerns and common interests. Last but not least, as ASEAN is currently developing its post-2025 vision, it is also important to ensure that the regions will be able to deliver a successful AEC Blueprint 2025, as well as pave the way for the next stage of integration beyond 2025 that is sustainable and future-proof. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Today, the world needs shared prosperity more than ever. Indonesia achievement during its G20 presidency has laid a strong foundation for the region to continue advancing community building and integration efforts. I'm confident that under Indonesia's able stewardship in 2023, ASEAN will continue to recover better and stronger as we strive towards a more sustainable economic growth and make works towards elevating the region's position in the global economy. Thank you.